I'm going to give an introduction. So this is, uh, I'm here with Rachel Morgan, and today I observed her doing a lesson on factoring. And what were you factoring? Um, we did factoring trinomials, and then we had binomials. And uh, your focus, the, the thing you wanted me to collect data on was? My wait time. Was her wait time, and so I think I need to move the camera, though. Oh. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> it's okay because this is not a professional video, so there. We're good. Good thing I looked. All right. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. About that was Rachel. Okay. Um, <laughs> how are you feel or how are you feeling about the wait time? Because that's what you wanted me to focus on. So how are you feeling about the wait time? Um. I'm feeling okay about it. I didn't really have too much stuff for wait time in my um, lesson, but when I did, I kind of waited until the answer, so we did pretty good. So the wait time you're thinking about, what we talked about before was uh, what wait time could be um, you waited too long or you didn't wait long enough, so we were looking at everything, how long it took you to do things, but I think, but you're saying that you waited for them to answer, so your wait time you're referring to is like the wait time for a student to answer. Yes. And you did okay at that. And what did you see that made you feel like you did okay on that? Um, <laughs> like, did you always, I'm sorry, did you sorry. always, no, that was kind of a general question. So did you always wait for the student to answer and that's how you're saying that you did okay? Yes, instead of answering for them, because sometimes I get in a hurry and just give them the answer. Okay. So. So you felt pretty good about that? Yeah. Okay, and then also um, I timed the warm-up. Um, I believe it took until 10.04. Class started at 9.53. Mm -hmm. So it took a, about 11 minutes for the warm-up. And then it took 38 minutes for the mini lesson. <laughs> which yeah. It's factoring, so. Yeah. And then your activity was the rest of the class, which I believe was about... 20 minutes for the activity about because you know one point you said there was 15 minutes left yeah. 20 minutes so how are you feeling about that that it was 11 minutes for the warm-up 38 minutes for the mini lesson and then the rest of the class was the activity which was about 20 to 25 minutes um i know the mini lesson should have been shorter but because i was going through like three different ways of how to factor um i I think I should have broke it up a little bit and did like one way to factor and then do a little activity on that. The other way to factor, do a little activity on that, and then another way to factor, do activity on that. Because I felt like I stood up there and talked all class period, <laughs> is how I felt. But it wasn't something that I could let the students do because they don't know how to do it yet. Right. You so know? they walked me through how to, like, we did examples and they walked me through how to do the examples, but. I felt like I was up to the board too much. So what you're saying is you maybe you could have done like a little mini, like three mini lessons, like a mini lesson, then a little activity, whiteboard activity, and then another little mini lesson, and then a whiteboard activity, and then a mini. So okay, that makes yeah. sense. Then you could have done three mini lessons and three mm -hmm. activities in the same class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what comparisons might you make between the lesson you had planned and or envisioned and the one that you taught? Like how how did it turn out compared to what you thought it, how you thought it would turn out? So, I revised my lesson after first period because during first period when we were doing it, I was writing out all this stuff in the notes and I was like we were writing way too much. So, um which I mean, it's always good to write because I know we're supposed to write and everything, but um, there was like a lot of writing going on. So I tried to um, shorten the thing, the phrases that they had to write, kind of shorthand some of it, and um, you know, paraphrase some of the uh, steps and the rules and stuff like that. So um, I had to change a little bit of that during the transition between my first and my third period yesterday. So um, by the time I got to the one that you were observing, I had already changed quite a bit of it. <laughs> you had made revisions already? Yeah. Into having them write less. And was it um, 
wording that was it beneficial to them to have less words just yes. because of the time or other other reasons I think because they look at it and they're like I can't do this it's too much too much because they are like they look at it and there's like you know you know five sentences telling you what you're supposed to do and they're like oh my god like this is a lot of work when in reality it's really not so I try to shorten the wording so they don't look at it and already like accept failure you right. know so and so did you see benefits was there evidence with the other classes that um, by shortening what they were writing I think so like we at the end we had more time to do extra like um you know, like problems and stuff, and able to to have more time to do the problems that they needed to see, that I needed to see if they could do. Um, and I do feel like I had one, I only had one kid that was like, oh my God, this is a lot. But when I did it in first period the, for the first time, they're like, a lot of them were like, this is a lot. But, um, and I, I made sure to let them know like during the middle of the, uh, notes that you know I know it's a lot of words I know it doesn't mean anything right now but once we get to examples it will make sense so I think it helped right. by shortening it so when they did the what did you use as, you used a formative assessment what was your formative assessment that you used um, they I put a problem and they would work them out on their whiteboards and I'd walk around to see who you know how they were doing if they needed help if they're still struggling Right, and so did you have time for that formative assessment in first period to see how they were doing writing a lot compared to the other classes that didn't write a lot? Did you have time for that formative assessment in first um, period? Well, it's hard because first period is like two separate periods because like we only have half, like we see them every day. So I only get 40 minutes oh. one day and 40 minutes the other day. So that's why I said if I would have split it up into three sections, like here's your notes, let's do the formative assessment, here's your notes, do the formative assessment, here's your notes, do the formative assessment, it would have been more, it would have been better for first period, and I think it would also have been better for the other classes too, but mostly first period, I think, would have benefited more from that. Can you think of any other reasons? Like, so you're saying they would benefit more from breaking it up, doing the, the mini lesson than the activity, mm -hmm. and do, that activity was a formative assessment, mm -hmm. because you were w looking at the whiteboard to see how they were doing, um, and then, I mean, is there other reasons why that would have been beneficial? Um, it would have, I think it would have, like, maybe have helped with remembering the steps, too, because you go from learning the steps to go ahead and doing, you know, some of the problems, and so instead of waiting all the way through and just doing one example problem with each pair of notes, you would have done maybe three or four problems, and so and it would have, it would have, like, maybe clipped first instead of you having to get to like the third or fourth problem to where it's like okay I understand that now so maybe it would have helped I don't know if you so you're what I'm, and, and I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna paraphrase <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm gonna uh, what I'm hearing is that you're going to like by showing them like they would have got the step down for the first type of factoring because if I'm not mistaken I'm more than paraphrasing probably putting in words it, it built to the next one, mm -hmm. and so they would have had these steps better before they moved on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Because the steps for the first also was involved in the second as well. So like right, yeah. And then the third one was kind of totally different, except for the concept. I feel like I should right? have started no? with the third one because the third one is easy. And so if you go ahead and actually, if I would have moved it to the first one and did it the first one, maybe it would give them that success feeling. And oh. then they're like, oh, I could do this. This is easy. So it would build their confidence. Yeah. And they would feel more confident. Actually, now them. after talking about it, I just thought about that. Okay, <laughs> I should have done that. That's good. That's exactly why we're talking about it. Yeah. So to think about things like that. So, All right. So in the future, um, what do you want to stay mindful of from now on? Um, definitely not having 38-minute mini lessons. Okay. Not <laughs> Why? Because I felt like I was up there talking the whole time, and I know how boring it is when I'm having to listen to other people talk a lot. So, so you don't want me to just stand there and talk at a PD? No. Come on. No, okay, so. not at all. <laughs> right, and so therefore you want to, what's our fancy word? You want to make it more? Oh, student-centered. I want more of a student-centered lesson. Right. But I feel like this one was kind of hard to do a student-centered, uh, but I'm sure I could have found a way 
but I guess being a first year teacher, wink, wink. Do you, <laughs> do you think that though, if you did the mini lesson and then the short little mini lesson, you have to show them what to do. Teachers have to, sh mm -hmm. you know, especially in math, you have to model what you're trying to teach. So you model, but then you do your formative assessment where they're doing the activity on the whiteboard. And then, but then you did a mini lesson and you had them go to the board. I did. During the during the activity, so do you think that would have helped with what you're saying? Like you said, you wanted to make. Yeah, I think if I would have if I would have broke it up into three, it would have been better. It would have it would have made it more student centered too, because then they wouldn't be sitting there listening to me talk for 30 minutes. I mean. And then what? How do you think that? I mean, what would be the impact of it being more student centered? To be more engaged. I mean, they were engaged, but they weren't like. Engaged. If During the activity, sense. were they engaged? Yeah, yeah, they were pretty good. Yeah. Is there any way you could have got them more engaged during the activity? Maybe made it competitive. Okay. Some of the like maybe like, like board races or something like that. Okay. Could you do that in the future? Is that something you could do? Mm -hmm. And we could even do it with whiteboards. First one that's done, raise your board. I'll tell you if it's right or wrong. Oh, okay. Do that. I need to get some candy in here for motivation. <laughs> Need some motivation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then, and then by engaging them, what's going to be your ultimate, like your ultimate goal, your ultimate result of, and what will be evidence that by, you know, using. Well, if you engage them, they want to know they they learn better because they're actually paying attention. They're not just going okay, writing more steps, and so they would learn factoring a lot better, and that would ultimately give you better scores because they would know what they're doing. So your evidence will be their scores? Yeah. Yeah, on the standard assessment and academic, or CBA. Mm -hmm. All right, how might you ensure that you maintain focus on um, some of the things? What are some of the, so I'm hearing more, uh, I mean, we started out talking about time and now we, I mean, we kind of switched to being mindful of not staying at the board or mixing it up a little bit more for engagement. So, how might you make, ensure that you maintain focus? Are you are, were you comfortable with time? Do we need to revisit time? Oh, you said the mini lesson was too long. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So, how how might you mean, ensure that you maintain focus on having a shorter mini lesson and then more student engagement? Um, Give you a, yeah. like another question. I, okay. Yeah. I was having a good wait time. So, <laughs> I'm, like, uh, I'm hearing um, crickets so, in my head. Right, that's okay. Maybe How might you ensure that you maintain focus on um, like not work? Is, is there a tool? Can you think of a tool or some kind of uh, reminder to yourself that to help you with the things oh, that you want to be better at? I can time this. Use a, I can use a timer and also kind of do a minute to minute breakdown of what I should be doing kind of thing like okay I'm spending too long on this kind of thing yeah and have you done that in the past I have and did it help yeah kind of kind of <laughs> yeah and so what did you see that was better when you used the timer we were able to get to what we, everything that we needed to get to okay so so using timer can you think of anything else um, not really. Okay, so we're not <laughs> using the timer, and yeah. we can revisit it. Maybe, like, in the next observation, we can revisit and see how you're doing, and mm -hmm. then maybe come up with some other ideas. Okay, and last thing is, how might you incorporate this process? So the process is, you know, after you teach something, think, you think to yourself, like, well, how did I feel about that? How did it go? Um, how did it go compared to how I thought it would go? Um, what should I stay mindful of and then um, how can I maintain focus? How can I kind of train myself to do what I need to do to make it better for the kids? Like that was kind of the process. So how might you incorporate that process into your own thinking if we're not having this conversation? I feel like I kind of already do that a little okay. bit like because I already have done some of the revisions for the lesson. Um, 